Hey guys, welcome back to the Value Investing Funds podcast. I'm really, really excited for this episode. Uh, I think we're going to cover a lot of things in this episode. Uh, we'll cover IEX, and everyone is, uh, you know, asking about IEX, so we'll we'll cover that, and we'll cover some things that I think no one is talking about. I've like uh, I've had to go through a lot of stuff just to figure out if like someone is talking about the specific thing, which we will cover in this uh, video, and we'll actually start with that. So. You know, just stick with me and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And uh, please drop us a like as well. That would be really, really appreciated. So let's discuss IEX and uh, why this is one of the best businesses there is. And what are the problems and what is what are the tailwinds? I think there's one tailwind that, as I, as I said, no one is talking about. And uh, that's going to be something that's going to like impact the future for them in a lot of uh, in like in a very short period of time. So. Before we get into it, I just wanted to say that we are not your uh, uh, we are not your investment advisors. So please take this at face value and just uh, this video is only for your uh, education and uh, that's that's basically it. So yeah, so let's get into IEX. What does the what does the company do? So Indian Energy Exchange Limited operates a power trading platform. The company enables price discovery and risk management for participants of the electricity market, including industries eligible for open access. Its products include day ahead market, a physical electricity trading market for deliveries. Uh, for any sum, all 15-minute time blocks in 24 hours for the next uh, for next day starting from midnight. Term ahead market that provides a range of uh, products allowing participants to buy and sell electricity on intraday, day ahead contingency basis. So uh, there is like the Indian uh, electricity market is re heavily regulated, but the thing is the way it's set up, it it is set up for the discoms, which is the distribution companies, to fail. So slowly, gradually, uh, the new Udaya Yojana that the uh, the government has launched is going to be like a huge change for these companies. So in ka jo the way it's set up, the way the electricity market is set up is like if you read about it, you'll be like, why are we even doing this? So now they're starting to change it, but like right now it's not that great. So I, I want to point out a couple of things before we start, uh, you know, explaining IEX because then, as I said, no one is talking about this and this is the major tailwind that is in the favor of the company. So this is their investor presentation. You can see that the electricity generation, the capacity in the country has gone up uh, quite significantly. And uh, the, so, so if you read this, it says capacity growth of 8% and generation increase of 5% in the last 10 years has led to surplus generation in India. So what that means is that right now the generation of electricity is higher than what is required. So uh, the, the, gov the, uh, the country doesn't need the amount of electricity that's getting produced. So the way the discoms are set up, this discoms means just uh, like the distribution companies. So if you look at this uh, chart over here, long term, uh, long term agreements between the discoms and the companies that create uh, the produce electricity that that would be your NTPCs, your T uh, Tata Power, and all these bigger power grids and stuff like that that have uh, that they they produce energy. So they are the ones who are you know generating electricity. And Discoms are the distribution companies who have the network through which they transfer electricity to our houses. So they have the whole like the infrastructure that is built uh, built in around it. So the way it is set up right now is it's set up through PPA. So that's a that's a power uh, purchase agreement. So the the grid uh, makes a deal with the discom, the dis and the discom basically uh, tells them what amount of like power they need. So they say that we need say it's just a hypothetical example. How much? Yeah, 600 megawatt of electricity we need over the next 25 years. So these agreements are 25 years, and I think uh, you can also kind of make sense of this how like you don't know what is going to happen three years from now, but you're supposed to enter into an agreement and uh, figure out what your energy purchase uh, like is going to be 20 years from 25 years from now so this what this has led to is like and once the agreement is locked in you have to you have to no matter what take that electricity so if the if your uh, if your demand is 100 megawatts you have to take that 100, 100 megawatts you can't do anything about it so the way it's set up is like the discom companies during especially during covid industries are the most like the industries use the most amount of electricity so the industries kind of shut down so they were they, they weren't selling any uh, electricity to industries so the discoms had to take the bulk of that loss so they've already promised the 100 megawatts that they're going to use they were actually the discoms were actually using 60 megawatts so the 40 megawatts ki extra capacity he was just lying with them and they couldn't do anything with that so what are you going to do you, you can't do anything you just have to basically eat that uh, up like as a as a discom i have to take that loss so what they were doing is like if they promised if they if the promise price was like say 10 rupees now they have all this extra capacity they were selling it for like at losses heavy losses and that's why the electricity companies suffered so badly so what iex is going to do and this is where that's why i'm trying to like explain the whole thing 
आई एक्स जो कर रहा है आई एक्स इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन दिस होल इको सिस्टम बिकॉज वट इज़ गोन हैपन इन द फ्यूचर इज दिस पी पी एज गोन रन आउट एंड देन इट्स द शॉर्ट टर्म मार्केट विच इज नाउ ओनली इलेवन परसेंट इज गोन गो अप सो द वे लाइक पी पी एज स्टिल इंपॉर्टेंट दिल बी स्टिल पार्ट ऑफ द इको सिस्टम बट अगर मैं एक डिस्कॉम हूँ एंड माई डिमांड इज से हंड्रेड मेगा वॉट्स एंड आई एम राइट नाउ एंड आई थिंक लाइक इज गोन फ्लक्चुएट वट आई कैन डू इज आई कैन सेट अप एन अग्रीमेंट फॉर फिफ्टी मेगा वॉट्स एंड दी अदर फिफ्टी परसेंट आई कैन गो फ्रॉ आई कैन गो थ्रू द शॉर्ट टर्म मार्केट एंड यूज लाइक एंड बाय द the electricity based on how so ever i require it so i don't i'm not i'm not logged in into this agreement of like buying 100 megawatts so i think this is something that i was trying to like find and no one was talking about it and i had to do some like research on the first hand basis kind of figuring out how this thing works so that i can explain it so i hope hopefully i did a good job and if you liked it please uh, like uh, leave me a comment and if you if you want to know more about the discoms the udaya yojana please also leave a comment and we can make a video just based on this because i think tata power and all these other companies are going to be affected uh, significantly but uh, This is what how the discounts works. The short time market is only eleven percent right now, but uh, like if you see over here, the the bilateral. So bilateral is basically a discount going directly to a production company and uh, asking for them for the electricity. Say for the next one month, they expect that it's a holiday season and the demand is going to be higher. So say. Uh, Uh, in this example, like uh, Gupta Energy is going to go to NTPC and they're going to ask for uh, like hundred megawatts of energy. So I go to them. We negotiate a deal. There's a lot of like, you know, you can you can understand like how how cumbersome the process is. But through an exchange, I can just go on IEX. I can see which whichever producer has surplus capacity or whichever actually what uh, consumer has surplus capacity as well. They can be sellers as well in the market. So I can buy from another consumer and they'll they won't have to suffer because this way they can give their excess capacity to someone who needs capacity. And like this whole ecosystem. is going to be all over india so like someone in uh, punjab can sell like, like obviously you need the infrastructure for it but like this is what the model is so like in punjab someone can buy it from andhra pradesh that uh, has extra capacity or like telangana or like anyone anywhere else so that is how like the whole ecosystem is going to work and then that's going to help uh, the people and uh, the companies the discoms and like even the government as well because then that way they don't have to subsidize the electricity because right now they subsidize a portion of it and uh, industry subsidize subsidize a portion of it so the, the whole system is pretty messed up as i said if you want it we can make a like if there's enough interest uh, we can make a video just uh, explaining what are the problems with this whole situation and uh, what uh, what does the future hold for the for, for the electricity uh, you know the, uh, electricity in india so this is another thing here so we said 11% was the total short term market we can see the short term market hasn't grown much and you you would say man the short term market isn't growing much why are we so excited the reason is that the ppa so they are logged in like all these discounts are logged in for 25 years but slowly and gradually these discounts uh, these ppas are going to come to an end and all that it, the share of 89 the 89% share that is in the long term market is going to come into the short short term market and we can see how their share like this is iex shares in the in the short term market so they were at 3% in fy16 and now they are at 6.1 so this is the share in the short term market has doubled over the last 5 years which has led to a huge growth in their revenues and everything else so i think iex is is at the center is at the heart of this uh, like these discoms and stuff you can see like they're uh, like they're uh, they're growing at a 32% cagr since inception which is just freaking amazing like it's just Uh, obviously this is going to slow down a little bit with the ppas and they there is so much they can do like if the total share of the short term market is 11% they can't go over 12% right so this the the potential in the short term is getting a little bit squeezed but in the long term uh, it's going to be it's going to be okay and uh, another thing i want to tell you is that uh, their operating margins are 80% so that's like their revenues minus their uh, operating expenses at 80% and after taxes their profit margin is 60% so that's why i want to tell you again like we discussed this yesterday or like the video that, that we, we uploaded yesterday about tata power that tata power's margins are very low right so even though tata power is going to do maybe better but uh, iex will do better no matter what so the way iex makes the most amount of money is they charge about 1.5% approx fees on uh, on any every transaction so the person who is selling uh, the 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 energy on the exchange their infrastructure is so big there are so many clients they have so many distribution companies as well as product, uh, production companies as, as well as industrial users who are like who are the main con uh, consumers of electricity and uh, all these people and like actually uh, uh, the the government wants to get get it to a point where consumers we as like you and me can actually go on and uh, cho cho choose our pro provider which is going to be great as well in the future so like literally they have such a huge ecosystem that they can still tap into so this is just the incubation stage of the company the market cap is not that huge so we will discuss the valuations and how uh, what we think about this and a lot of people are looking at the pe ratio and saying it's overvalued whereas we'll talk about it as we go forward so uh, so a 1.5% of the total amount transacted 
approximately they get the fees uh, indian gas exchange start uh, is starting this so so indian energy exchange is starting another business called indian gas exchange so i i, I told you about this i think uh, in one of our early videos i think it was a cdsl video where the best kind of business is the one that can spawn other businesses like it so iex is already such a great business they're spawning an, another business uh, like them which is the indian gas exchange so that is going to help them in the future as well and that's just going to keep on like you know just adding on to their uh, profitability profitability so that is something else to uh, to consider and uh, yeah i think we've we've con basically covered most of the things that are in their favor like there's a huge runway for them to grow into there's there's things that are that, that are happening for them and uh, like it's yeah so this is uh, this is the igx uh, uh, vision so to lead india's transition towards a gas based economy by architecting new generation solutions for gas trading and access so the gas uh, consumption uh, the government's vision is to increase it from 6% to 15% by 2030 so they as i said like they spawned another business with a very high roce and very 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 good margins so i think that is also in the long term uh, going to be a huge 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 potential tailwind for the company as well so that is something to keep your uh, eye on and uh, yeah so let's just uh, go through the a recap kind of why to invest the margins and the roc in the balance sheet situation of the company are impeccable the nature of the business is such that it is not disrupted due to covid and instead became stronger and more profitable with a lot of new people entering the market we can say that this is only the beginning and more people will keep joining the market leading to higher revenues for the company as most of their revenues come from transaction fees as the electricity market shifts from long term ppas to short term market iex is set to succeed IGX will only add their only add to their value revenues as well as their bottom line. So now, why not to invest? There are many reasons why you shouldn't invest. I, I feel like, but uh, like the only reason I would say is uh, first of all regulation. So in, even in their annual report, if you read through the annual report, they talk about uh, how the government can come into the picture and like you know deregulate them a little bit because they control ninety five percent of this market at this point, like the exchange market of electricity. So monopolies are not good. So as 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 they grow, they their growth might be stifled by the other uh, government. They might say you know like this is. you can't have such a huge share or there's there's other ways how this can like play out and uh, how they can be stopped so that could be something and there's also something uh, that i read about decoupling so you can actually buy uh, the buyer can go on iex and sell it on a different platform so like the that's not uh, like apple right like with apple products you can only stay with apple you can't go somewhere else so that's why they have that moat but with iex you can actually use multiple exchanges it is going to be very hard to set up an exchange because the capital outlay and they have i think over 5000 uh, consumers at this point so it's not easy for like someone a new player to come into the market and say you know i'm just going to take over iex that's not going to be possible but i think the the bigger problem is definitely with the with the regulation i think the government can stop their growth by saying you, you know you can't uh, just control the market like this they might a government player might enter into the market chances of that is low but like you know there's if there's a huge potential and if the operating margins are that huge it's uh, it's really uh, like it's it's not not beyond possibility that some other player comes into the market so they have like 4400 plus industries 55 plus distributions 500 plus generators 99% of the market share 99% uh, share in the market as is huge and 32% kagar so i mean this is uh, this is a pretty much a monopoly business so let's get into the intrinsic value calculations uh, financials we used again from march uh, fiscal year 21 annual revenue growth rate we used 12% because i think there's going to be a point where it starts to i think the last three quarters have been a little bit stagnant and this is just the nature of the beast i think it's going to slow down a little bit and uh, year 10 ebit margin i think 15% we took uh, i'm pretty sure we took a 75% margin so that i need to update i will do that afterwards so ebit margin is going to be 75% and uh, so this yeah so the vif valuation quadrant i put it in uh, so the business is very very good it's a comfortable business i can't get more comfortable than this the price is a little bit higher i don't think it's overpriced so as i said the intrinsic value according to us is 380 rupees and 20 uh, to uh, 380 rupees and 2 paise and this is after Uh, a margin of safety that has been taken into account so so f50 yeah, margin of safety 380 or 2 is what it comes out to i think the the price right now is 403 rupees so we're not that far away from it uh and i think again as i said in cdsl if you should you should watch that video as well this is a, a stock uh, the market cap small still i think it's uh, it's it'll be a good stock to like do a sip in you just keep on buying whatever like your total investment horizon is plus uh whatever you are and again this is not a investment advice this is just what i we would be doing 
uh, we would be you know just adding slowly and gradually uh, to the position not at these levels we we'll wait for that uh, 325 that's where we are comfortable with the, we gave it a score of uh, 7 just because the valuation is a little bit higher if it was at uh, 320 maybe that's what i think would be where uh, we would be buying around 325 would be where we would be buying heavily but right now it's just a little bit overvalued i think there could be a correction so yeah the vif uh, valuation quadrant according to us it's a little bit of a questionable price the business is very comfortable like the business is a 10 on 10 you can't you you can't find a better business than this and that's why i tell you every time whenever we are looking at businesses if a strong business that this so this the thing with iex is again another margin of safety and something that you need to consider also is a dumb idiot like you and me can run this business like it's not that hard whereas startup power you need someone who has who's been able to like you know uh, like who has done st stuff in the past and like to turn around a business which is so hard like it's not their fault some ba some businesses are just tough to make it's uh, tough to make work like utility business by the nature of the business it's very hard to run so whenever you're looking at stocks right look at the look at the business beyond the stock I just don't look at the stock always that's what I tell you look at the business is the business doing okay if the business is doing okay over a long period of time even if you pay a, a, a premium you'll be fine and uh, obviously if the market corrects no one can tell you the, when the market is going to correct so you can just like do whatever you can do but with this business i think i think you should be fine if you st even start doing a sip and uh, slowly increase it if the price goes down so uh, that's what i would i would do as i said and uh, yeah guys before i leave please subscribe and again this is not uh, we are not your sebi registered we are not sebi registered so you shouldn't rely on this uh, education or this video it's only for education purposes. So yeah, please subscribe, like, and share this with a friend, guys. Uh, that, that'll be appreciated. These take a long time to make. So yeah, try to answer all your questions when it comes to that. So thank you so much, guys, and thanks for watching. And uh, thanks for the 100 subscribers again. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a great uh, milestone. Let's get to 500. Take care, guys. Bye.